Okay, last week I began the early planning stages of my weld-in roll cage and I was working on the main hoop and trying to get it to fit the car the best I could. Then the following day on Friday, I was editing the video and I realized as I was doing more research into the rules, my cage design was not in spec. Now keep in mind, I am not building a full competition roll cage. I'm building a half cage and that's for mixed use. That's mixed street use along with track use. So with a helmet, without a helmet. And a full competition cage without a helmet is actually more dangerous than probably no cage at all. I'm going to be going over the guidelines I'm gonna use for my main hoop design and uh, share it with you guys and also the fabrication. So please stay tuned. Garage time. Before I came out for today's video, I actually did a little bit more research as I mentioned and I put the seat in my car. This is a aftermarket seat, of course, believe it or not, I got them used from a woman who had them in her minivan. Um, this seat does recline and I have it in its furthest back position and it's also reclined um, back as far as it can go. So I have um, future plans to lower the seat down. This is a pretty tall seat back and I wanna put it lower to the uh, floor pan. And I'm not 100% sure this is the seats I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using these to get started. I actually have two of them. But for planning purposes and the roll cage, I have put myself in the right driving position. I have marked where my head is on, on the roof using some tape. And I have the roll bar in place such that it is at the correct distance. So the rules state that it needs to be a minimum of three inches and a maximum of six inches from your head. You don't want your head to hit the roll bars. Okay, I've also made some modifications to this mock-up roll bar. If you remember from last week, this is just three quarter inch conduit and it's here to visualize where the bar is gonna lay and where the bends should be and how close it should be to the structure. And the problem with the previous design was that it had a, a bend here that wasn't in the same plane. So it, in the past uh, design, this was bent back. It was bent back to follow this B pillar shape. And I did that because it fit the car the best, but the rules state two things was in violation. One, this main hoop, uh, which they call it, should be as vertical as possible. So um, 90 degrees is preferred. There is a tolerance of 10 degrees. So I have this in position right now at nine degrees when the car is at its normal rake. This is nine degrees. So it's within tolerance now and also the bends are all in the same plane. So it comes up, it bends in, and then it bends again. And also the number of bends can be a maximum of 180 degrees, no more than four bends. So we have one bend here, two bends here. These both total 90 degrees. So of course the other side will um, make it 100 degrees in total. So it's in compliance. The other thing that's important down here is the foot. Um, there's a 120 square centimeter base that needs to be welded into this longitudinal area. I need to get over to the workshop to, de to determine what is their um, centerline radius. This is a six inch centerline radius. And I'm hoping that the tooling that the workshop has is the same. Okay, I'm at this uh, workshop now and looking at the supply of bending dies that are available for the JD squared bender. So it looks like there's an inch and a half by 4.5 radius. So I'm gonna take a look at this one. Now this has been uh, bent and rebent a few times. So I'm gonna make a clean one for the other side and determine the total width and weld it together in the middle so I can have a full main hoop template when I take it over to the workshop.
right, I got this swimming pool noodle. Um, the hole inside is probably about five eighths, but I'm gonna chop off, you know, little two inch sections so I can wrap it around the conduit and simulate the actual diameter of the tube. Well, this is bigger than the actual diameter of the tube, but it's going to include the clearance I wanna have between this and the body. So if the actual diameter of the tube is inch and a half, and this is about two and a half inches, then that gives me a clearance of about three quarters of an inch on each uh, place where it contacts the body, and that's about what I'm after. So I'm just gonna you know, go inside the car and uh, weld those two pieces together into one complete hoop with the correct clearances. Okay, I've just marked um, the center line of the car relative to both left and right of the hoops. So I'm gonna cut it here and weld these into one continuous bar. Okay, this acid bath here, it's muriatic acid and water. This will eat off the galvanized coating while I clean up my workbench. Okay, and there we have the finalized shape of the main hoop, hopefully. Um, you can see here the ends are beveled. This is where it contacts the, uh, well, soon to be plate. There's a plate that goes here before it touches the longitudinals. This is what we have so far on the fit of the uh, temporary roll cage. You can see these, uh, foam donuts are kind of keeping it placed, spaced off of the uh, chassis. And it's about equidistant in the tight points. Right there around each bend. Also pretty tight here against the uh, B-pillar quarter window area. Here you can get somewhat of a distance between the, the driver's head and the roll bar. That's about the maximum uh, six inches. So this gap now between the B-pillar and the uh, roll bar is bigger and I think I'm still able to put a plate between there going from the quarter window. It's just gonna be more visible in the window, which in the, which in the previous video, that's what I was trying to avoid. Here's the roll bar coming up along the seat. Here's a view from the back window. And you can see it, it does follow the shape of the car as much as possible. It's, I got it pretty tight against the uh, chassis there and then it contacts the base right there at the longitudinal. Same is true for this side. It's fitting pretty tight, comes up on there, and then it follows the roof pretty tight as well. Okay, right down here is, is where it attaches to the longitudinal. Now, I probably need to bring the uh, total width in just a tad, only so that there's a little room to weld it. So here's how the roll bar will be visible from outside the car. Unfortunately, it can't follow the B-pillar, so it does have some visibility from the quarter window. Okay, guys, I need to get <clears throat> just a little bit geeky again in here. As I told you from visiting the workshop, I determined that the radius of my mock-up tubing, which was six inches, is shown here. These little blue lines here are the six-inch radius, and you can see where those bends start and finish using the six-inch radius. And um, rather than go buy a different bender, I don't even know if they're available in four and a half inch uh, radius, but I decided to uh, use the computer to determine where these new bends will start and finish. So this maroon or red color is the, the um, new roll bar with the tooling available at the workshop. So this is a four and a half inch radius, which by the way is three times the diameter and the rule books say it must be minimum three times diameter. So this is within specifications, but you can see it does stick out just a little bit more than what this blue line did. 
It's subtle. That's probably uh, maybe three eighths of an inch or something. I could measure if I really wanted to, but it basically bulges out a little bit more due to the tighter radius, which is fine. And the uh, start stop points are really what I'm after. And the computer just helped me <clears throat> redesign the tubing so that the uh, straight sections are in the same place but the, uh, the bend lines and where the bends start and finish are slightly different. So I'm using what I have, and um, I've created a drawing over here on this screen. Um, this is kind of a quick little drawing showing um, where I need to mark the tube. Okay, I have my tube cut a little extra long, and I've marked the, uh, the center line here. And then I've actually marked to the location of the first bend. And this accounts for a practice bend, which I determined has a little bit of um, stretch.
Okay, I'm back from the workshop and, uh, you know, I was unable to really do um, a great job filming at the workshop. Um, I didn't have my tripod or my microphone and all that good stuff. Plus, I was pretty busy just trying to get these bends correct. So let me walk you through what happened. Basically, I started with this test bend. So what's important on this test bend, this is the first time I used the bender, but every die and every material is slightly different. And so where you put a mark on the tubing and where the bend actually starts is slightly different. So I determined, and the manuals were really good from JD Squared, by the way. Um, the manuals were really good in determining what that is. So I determined, uh, just like the example in the manual, that the start of the bend is actually seven eighths from the edge of the die. So once you understand that, um, that's important because as you bend it, the material uh, actually stretches, there's uh, some spring back involved, and there's all sorts of stuff involved. But that number, um, seven eighths of an inch off the edge of where the bend starts is pretty important. I had all the uh, bend start locations determined like I showed you on the computer. And I started in the center, I marked the center line and went out from there. So as I got all the way to the end, any kind of stretching or any kind of um, aberrations in the metal happens on the end. I'm gonna cut this off anyways. Some people that are better at this than I am know how to do it so it's perfect you know from end all the way to end but uh, I knew that because this was my first time I would just be trimming the ends off. Uh, the other thing that I did um, after a little bit more review is I took 3 eighths of an inch out of the center so the uh, drawing is 3 eighths of an inch narrower than this actual sample tube because um, as I showed you on the computer this radius here is smaller than this radius here. So I needed a little bit of extra room in the car. So it's a little bit narrower. And then down here, I changed this angle. I just added another degree. I went to 17 degrees. This one here is about 15 or 16. So at the end, it gives me just a little bit more clearance. There's three eighths of an inch plus the extra degree. That allows it to um, stay off of the wall on the longitudinal. So it's gonna be easier to weld. Here. So I'm gonna double check this angle here. This was pretty arbitrary. Okay, I just determined that the angle of the main hoop relative to where it attaches to the longitudinal is here on my protractor. So I'm gonna transfer this angle onto the actual roll bar. It's like 58 degrees. Okay, yeah, I'm excited to try it out. Um, although I am pretty confident based on the mock-up that this is gonna work, but let's see how close it is. So it's, it's touching right about here. Uh, right here, there's about a finger's width of spacing. That's probably uh, five eighths of an inch. And then it, it does follow pretty well down here, comes down, and then right where it touches the base, it is shifted in. So if you remember, the mock-up tubing was over against this edge right here. Um, this edge right here, I was trying to get it away from because it's gonna be difficult to weld um, this edge it's going to have a base plate on it but that edge is going to be difficult to weld if there's a tube right in front of it so um, i shifted this over and in a little bit now it's probably too far in i'd like this to be centered between this landing before i take this main hoop back out to cut it shorter i put in the diagonal bar it's attached here behind my head and it goes down to the fixed point on the lower um, passenger side but i taped it in place so that i can determine if it's gonna block my view with the rear view mirror. So I got my rear view mirror. I'm basically just guessing where it might go, holding it up. And I can see, I can see the roll bar or the diagonal bar in my mirror, um, but it goes just behind the seat. So the obstruction is not that bad. Okay, I've been slicing and dicing on the bottom of this main hoop and taking out little pieces. So 
I took out, you know, five eighths on each side roughly. And then second cut was kind of quarter inch, eighth inch. So now I got the uh, main hoop in its position that I want it to be in. Okay, the only difference this time is I can now stick my hand here. I got uh, probably about an inch of clearance here. So I just need to shift this over here just a tad bit, maybe uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch over without affecting these upper gaps because the upper gaps are perfect. Uh, I just need to stretch the tube out a little bit and I can force it when I put the diagonal member in, I can force this over. Right now, the diagonal member is just emulated by this rope. It's just here to get kind of a visual of how it interacts with the car and the driver's visibility from the back window. Okay, the clearance up here is about the same. I can stick my hand in, shift it around. It's about an inch, three quarters of an inch. And then coming along, coming along here down this door jam, um, the fit is pretty nice. And this one is right on target. Okay, before I cut that diagonal bar, I want to do some more research on the rules to make sure that I have it in the right position. So far, I haven't wasted any tubing. I, this is my first time doing this. I spent a lot of time uh, researching and on the computer and watching videos, JD squared. Uh, I highly recommend, the tooling is great. Um, the documentation is great. There's a video uh, right up here, I'll link to it, uh, showing how to use the machine. Get out in your garage, build something cool. Don't be afraid to try, it's just metal. Take care guys, see you next week.